Yes, my name is David Pistempe, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Twindom. And what we do at Twindom is we 3D scan you, so we turn you into a 3D model. And then with that 3D model, your 3D models of you, we can do some pretty cool things. For starters, we can 3D print you into little lifelike figurines. But we can do other things as well. We can rig you and turn you into video gaming avatars, such that you can play as yourself in video games. Um, we can do kind of modifications. I've, I've, had, I've added 10 pounds to my gut before. I've been able to pull dimensions off of these 3D models and recommend clothing sizes to myself. So that's what we do at 3D or at Twindom. And so then the question is, why am I here today? And to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure why I'm here today. Um, I think it, the introduction says it all. It's, uh, my profession is within the 3D printing space. And um, I imagine the, the event producers uh, today who are doing a phenomenal job, by the way, they probably Google 3D printing Bay Area. They probably found Twindom or Dreambox, and then they probably found the first email address on that website, which was mine. Uh, they emailed me, and I gladly accepted. Uh, well, the truth of the matter is I do not want to talk about 3D printing at all today. Um, not because it isn't a fantastic technology. It is. Uh, it's just that I get to speak to you guys. And I don't often get to speak to a group that I feel like I actually have things to share with. Um, because I'm actually not that much older than you. Um, I'm two years out of undergrad at UC Berkeley, so maybe that is an eternity for most of you. But, but looking back, it doesn't feel that far off that I was in high school. And I kind of learned one incredibly important lesson uh, going through life about hard work. And what I would instead like to share with you is kind of my experiences and this particular especially important lesson. So to preface all of this, I am a completely um, ordinary person. I have an absolute average IQ. I'm not especially good at any instruments. Um, I'm okay at math. Um, was always horrible with grammar. But I was taught sort of this. If you work hard, you can accomplish anything from a very young age. And kind of through life, with enough hard work, I've been able to accomplish. I was the valedictorian of my high school. I graduated the top of my class at Berkeley. And I also played badminton for a good number of years. I actually played 14 Canada and won a gold medal at the Pan American Games. Um, None of this was, had anything to do with any natural talent. I was just fortunate enough to, at a very young age, to learn that with hard work you can, you can accomplish anything. Now this was a very, very um, reassuring fact for me. Because there were things, when I was very, very young, like I'm talking four, five, six, I want to be an astronaut, all those things. There were things that I wanted to accomplish, but I had no clue how to do them. But I was told that if I worked hard, that one day everything would just figure itself out. Now what I also learned was that this isn't true. Um, at least it's not entirely true. The truth of the matter is, if you work hard enough, you can accomplish everything, anything. So I first learned this when I was 12 years old. I was playing badminton at a local tournament, and I had just lost to kind of the top dog, the, the best player. And I was in my kitchen, I was speaking with my dad, and I was uh, blaming my loss, as I often did, on uh, just the fact that this kid was so much more talented than me, and that there was nothing I could possibly do to ever reach his heights. And as I was going on and on and uh, whining and complaining, he stopped me and he pulled a piece of paper out in front of us and he drew a horizontal line right across it and then he added three ticks to it. Two on the left, one on the right, and he labeled them. And he labeled them, you, him, best in the world. And he goes, David, you deserve to lose that match. I was like, oh gee, thanks dad, that's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 I, I don't mean any offense. You deserve to lose that match because your opponent, he works harder than you do. Now again, I took great pride in my work ethic because, again, I believe that if I worked hard, I could accomplish anything. So this was equally as insulting to me. And he goes, no, no, sorry, again, again. He works harder than you, and more often. Because I see him every morning, 7 a.m., I guess not every morning, six days a week, practicing his footwork by himself on the courts. That's just something you don't do. You work hard, yes, you absolutely work hard, but you just don't work as hard as he does. And now I know you, David, I know that you want to beat this particular individual. And if you want to beat him, you have to find a way to take this line here, this little tick that is you, and to push it back past his line. This is your line of ability. And if you can find a way to work harder than him and push it past him, you will beat him. And I also know you, David. I know you want to be the best in the world at this sport. Because what kid who plays a sport doesn't want to be the best in the world at that particular thing? What you have to do, you have to find the best person in the world. You have to figure out what they're doing. You have to do what they're doing, and then a little bit more. And then only then, or then and only then if you do that, can you push yourself past that person and become the best in the world. So really what I had learned in that particular lesson, which I realized applied to almost anything in life, anything that I wanted to be good at, I could always find the person I wanted to emulate, figure out what they're doing, and then create a plan to match that. And so the first thing I learned about hard work is that you have to understand how hard you need to work. 
So this particular individual here is the reason I started playing badminton, or kept playing, because I played hockey, I played lacrosse, I'm a tall kid, I was a big kid as, uh, when I was young, so I was good at most physical sports. Um, this guy, uh, his name is Artie Viranata, he's from Indonesia, and he's the former best player in the world in 1992, and he was also my coach. And to be able to serve under the tutelage of him was amazing. And so I wanted to be the best player in the world, so I started asking Artie, how did you do it? And this is what he explained to me. Um, he was recruited at the age of 14 years old for the Indonesia national training team. So I don't know if you knew this about Indonesia, about 300 million people, um, and badminton is the only sport that they medal at at the Olympics, so it's a huge deal there. So they have a recruiting program. So 14 years old, he was identified. He was pulled out of school permanently at 14 years old to train five hours a day, six days a week, and it took him 10 or 11 years uh, before he achieved the position of best in the world. As soon as he shared this story with me, I no longer wanted to be the best person in the world. Um, I thought it would be cool, but I wasn't ready to dedicate the rest of my life to it because there were other things I also wanted to accomplish. But in learning this, you, you, I got to, at least I started to realize that you have to be able to identify how hard you need to work if you want to accomplish something important. The next, um, the second most important thing to this is you have to understand how hard you're actually working. Uh, so this one is uh, one of my favorite stories, actually. So at UC Berkeley, one of my favorite activities was during finals week when I was studying in the library here. Um, on a break, I'd walk around and I'd peek over the shoulders of everyone that was studying there. Um, mostly people that had their computers, and I would see what they were looking at. And the reason I started playing this game is because um, I realized that 30% of students at any given point in time during finals week on their laptops would be on Facebook. Um, and this absolutely amazed me because I knew that these same students, because a lot of them were my friends, would come back and they'd brag about how they pulled an all-nighter. And they'd brag about how they woke up in the morning, studied all night long, uh, ate dinner, crashed, did that same thing a couple days in a row. But these are the same people that were spending their days studying kind of on Facebook. And it upset me a little bit because then I know what would happen next is they would take their final and they would post this meme on their Facebook page. Uh, they wouldn't do as well as they hoped. You see Berkeley where your best is never good enough. And then they would fall back into this mindset, the mindset that I had when I was 12 years old, which is that you somehow aren't good enough. There is something about you that is inherently worse than the person that's getting the A's. It's not that at all. It's simply just a matter of kind of putting in your hours and pushing yourself a little bit further along that line. So, hard work, there's two really, really important parts to it. First, how hard do you need to work? To find the person that you want to emulate, you want to be like, and then create a plan to do that. And then second, don't lie to yourself. Um, that's the hardest part to do, by the way. It's so easy to lie to ourselves, make ourselves feel better about ourselves, but when you stop lying to yourself and you start figuring out when you are actually working hard, um, you can accomplish amazing things. So now, I learned this at a pretty young age, and I kind of became obsessed with it. And so I started studying <laughs> successful people in all fields. And um, what I realized is that they all had very similar stories to Artie. They all, from a very young age, for whatever reason, started dedicating themselves to a single subject, a single topic, and over the course of decades sometimes, they, they managed to put themselves kind of uh, into the upper echelons of their particular activity. And what you realize is when you figure out that is that's tens of thousands of hours of work. And so you pull out a calculator and you start figuring out how many hours there are in a day when you're creating your plan and you realize that in order to do that, that involves an incredible, incredible amount of sacrifice. I mean, that's the reason I, I gave up on my dream of becoming the best badminton player in the world, because I wasn't ready to sacrifice school and everything else in order to play badminton. So this right now is roughly a list of uh, priorities in my life at this particular point in time. And since starting Twindom, and realizing just how much effort goes into starting a company, uh, realistically, I have time for the first one, and that's about it. Uh, my family life, I get to speak with them once every two weeks by like Skype for an hour. Friends uh, from school, haven't spoken with them in months. Uh, physical activity on Saturdays, if I'm lucky, I get to go on a run. Um, I haven't traveled in years. It, you know, like a couple words come to mind, maybe a little depressing, maybe workaholic. But the fact of the matter is, I absolutely love what I do. And that's the reason that I can put this, put in those hours. That's the reason I can go 90 hours a week, every single week, hopefully for a couple more years. And what I started to realize about every other person that was able to put in these tens of thousands of hours is the only way they were able to motivate themselves for so many years in a row is because they loved what they did. 
Um, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with this individual. It's Wayne Rooney, one of the top soccer players in the world. Um, I read this really great story about him a number of years ago where he would play seven or eight hours a day, uh, just kind of in the field right outside his house, and his parents could not get him indoors because he just could not put down the soccer ball. He loved the sport that much that the, the time that he had to put in to become where uh, the position he's at right now was just a supernatural thing for him to do. This individual is Sidney Crosby. He's a hockey player, so none of you probably know him. Uh, but it rings true and dear to my roots. Um, he's touted as the next Wayne Gretzky. Hopefully some of you at least know who Wayne Gretzky is. Exact same story. In fact, there's kind of an ad campaign that goes on in Canada for our big fast food chain where it's trying to get Sidney Crosby off the ice as like a little junior player. He, he couldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He dedicated his entire life to the sport, and it's paid off for him. Uh, he's now the single best player in the league. And so that's kind of what I, I want to explain to you here. It's, it's not if you work hard you can accomplish anything, it's if you work hard enough you can accomplish anything. And hard enough is a factor of two things. First off, it's hard, how hard do you have to work? If there's something that you really, really want to accomplish, find someone that's done it before and emulate them. Figure out what they've done, ask them some questions, and then set up a plan. And then second off, when you're executing on that plan, don't lie to yourself. Did you put in five hours? Did you put in three? It's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect, a thousand other um, little sentences like that. And then finally what you realize is that in order to be the best at these really, really big things, it involves an incredible amount of sacrifice, and that's something that takes a really long time to wrap your head around. Um, I understood that a little bit earlier in life, but I, I wasn't willing to sacrifice all these things during college, during high school and whatnot. Only now, once I've started my career and I'm working on Twindom, have I actually taken the full plunge such that I barely see the light of day. Um, but it's okay because I absolutely love what I do, and there, I would have it no other way. And that is really what you have to find in order to be able to motivate yourself in order to accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.